Okay, welcome into the shop. It's great to have everyone here as usual. Usually I do not shoot intro videos like this. We just get right into working. But for this one, I need to give a little bit of background on this piece. First, I just want to give a big thanks to Simply Safe. They have been rock solid sponsors of this channel for many years now. They're a big reason why this channel still rolls on. And today they're sponsoring this video. So remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. We'll learn more about them in a little bit. The good one, uh, multifamily, you know, whatever that is, like a like a apartment complex. Really cool, like multi living uh, development in downtown Austin, kind of right off the east on the east side of downtown, right next to I-35. This is the new thing opening up in summer 24. I got commissioned to build their reception desk as you walk into the kind of open uh, lobby of the uh, building. It's a really cool space, and I'm honored to be able to build this piece uh, for that. So this is what we're building. Um, it incorporates uh, white oak, brass, a brass countertop, and walnut veneer top uh, with some drawers in it. So we're going to jump right in now. We've got a long video. Grab a coffee, uh, make yourself a sandwich, grab a cold beer. It's going to take a little while. we got about 40, 45 minutes of video, but I think you're going to enjoy this one. This is a, a tricky build, a lot going on. So let's get started. Okay, jumping right into this. This is the cabinet section of the desk that's going to house six drawers, two of which are file drawers, and the rest are just, just regular drawers you can put anything in. All the joinery here, the dado has all been designed in Fusion 360 and laid out on, in cam and cut on my CNC. You can see here in the rendering what we're building, this little kind of center cabinet here, there's a, there's a cedar to each side of it, and that'll be the actual host or the receptionist. And the opposite side, obviously, is where the client or, or whoever's entering the building comes up to get information. Right now, we're just gluing this up. I always kind of try to tackle things a little bit aggressively. I probably could have done this in a couple stages of a glue up instead of trying to glue all these pieces in at one shot and use every clamp I have hanging on the wall to try to figure it out. So these little dividers go in. They step back about a quarter of an inch from the verticals. Uh, kind of a little shadow line there, and then the drawer fronts will be flush with the step back. So it'll have a little bit of a, you know, just kind of a detail there where the drawer fronts step back from the vertical uh, dividers and the sides. Like I said, I'm going to pull every clamp I possibly have to get this thing glued up and clamped up. I actually remember doing this. I remember this glue up, and it was, it was challenging. You might notice there there's a bow on that clamp. I got that for Christmas from my dad, a great Christmas present. I, can't have enough clamps. That's that's every woodworker already knows this. So once I get through and get get it all clamped how I like it, get it squared up, I'll throw some screws into it where you're not going to see them through the top usually. And then we're going to move on. I just wanted you guys to see how this came together. We're going to jump into making the brass inlay that goes into the inside of the cabinet. So there's really four main components to the underside. There's the drawer box, the front box, and then these two side panels. And you're looking at it right there. You see that kind of brass U-shape going through there. So we're going to make that piece first, and then we'll, we'll make the other two pieces and kind of clamp it all together. It'll be a three-piece panel. So having the, the, the CAD program in CNC makes doing this really easy. This is a three-quarter piece of plywood, so each one of these little... L's, I guess you could call them, are going to get brass veneer to the face of them. So right now I'm just cutting, I left tabs on these and I'm just going through my bandsaw cutting those tabs off. Kind of awkward here, but thankfully the big Oliver has a three by three foot table on it. So you can cut bigger pieces on it without much issue. Once I get these cut out, these are oversized, right? So let's make that first. You're only going to see about an inch and a quarter of this. The rest is going to be buried about a half inch deep in each one of the panels. So now I'm going to use the same saw. This is not the correct blade to cut metal. It's too aggressive. I need a finer tooth blade, but it got the job done for what I needed to do. I'm basically ripping out, oh, I think these are three inch wide strips. Uh, and I'm going to rip them all out of this just thin piece of brass here that I ordered online. And then we're going to come in and work on getting these joined together. So there's three pieces that we have to join up to make that curve. There's two long pieces and then on the curve I've got like a, I think it's a six by six square that kind of helps us wrap around that curve. So there will be a joint, there'll be two joints in the uh, the brass inlay. 
I'm going to go ahead and mark these so I don't lose track because each one's a little bit different. I had to go to my disc sander there and kind of adjust the end and make it nice and clean and smooth so it has a good seam and a good fit. I'm drilling holes in it here because we're going to epoxy these to the plywood and you, epoxy is super slippery and they won't stay in place when we put them on the back. So I'm going to drill little holes uh, that are placed nice in the center of everything and then we'll we'll feed brass screws into those holes and that'll hold these pieces in place as they go in the bag and get clamped down to the plywood. You see my dad helping me out. He was back there kind of sanding the burr off everything, getting it all cleaned up. I will say this is I'm you know this is the way I approached this and the first one was a little bit of kind of we ran into some problems but we figured it out. This is total boat epoxy I've mixed up. A uh, couple of reasons why epoxy is a good adhesive for different types of materials. So we got wood going to metal. Also, epoxy has a long open time, so I got plenty of time here to to get it to get it on, and then get all these little pieces screwed on. So the brass screws are going on uh, about three quarters of the way in. I, I'm not tightening the, these down super tight because if I did, it would crinkle that that brass that thin brass metal. So I'll leave them proud. You can see there I had some issues to kind of get it to seam up, stay in place. It wants to move around, but I got it where it needed to be. And once I, once I get that screw buried in about three quarters of the way, I'm going to come back with, I'm going to come back with these little pinch cutters and just cut the heads off of these screws. And then my dad's going to clean all that residue and extra epoxy off. And then I'm going to hit it with an orbital sander to sand it down and get those those brass screws flush to the surface. That way they're not gonna do any damage uh, to my bag when I put it in the, the veneer bag. Okay, let's talk about this little guy right here. His name is Chester, newest addition to our family. He is 32% super mutt, 24% German Shepherd, 23% American Pitbull, and 14% Husky. He's got it all going on. He's absolutely crazy. He's all over the place. My kids love him. He's wild. And one day he might turn out to be a pretty dang good guard dog or not. Regardless, this is a great entry point into talking about today's sponsor, Simply Safe, which my wife and I use to protect our home and I use to protect my shop. We've had the system set up for almost four years now, and I honestly just feel like it's a part of our house. Simply Safe is a comprehensive security system for your entire home. It has advanced sensors Please and cameras to detect now. threats from break ins, fires, floods, and a lot more. Simply Safe also offers exclusive 24 7 live guard protection and a smart alarm indoor camera. With live guard protection, their Simply Safe expert agents act within five seconds of receiving an alarm signal. Using the smart alarm indoor camera, the agents can even see and speak to intruders in real time. We also have two of their outdoor cameras on our property, one on the pool, which gives me a notification anytime that sensor detects motion around the pool, which gives me a peace of mind having kids. We also have a camera set up on the shop and garage, so we have protection over our vehicles, the Argosy, and all my equipment in the shop. Not to mention, I have an entire system for my shop to help protect it from theft. Unlike traditional home security systems, Simply Safe never locks you into a long-term contract. The professional monitoring plans are available for less than a dollar a day. Again, my favorite part of the system is having the app and beginning the notifications. Every day I get probably 20 notifications from cameras on my phone, and it doesn't bother me at all because I know what's going on on my property. I know when people are here. Now, the great news is my viewers get 20% off their Simply Safe security system when they sign up for the Fast Protect Monitoring Plan. And to get your first month free, just go to simplysafe.com forward slash Andy Rawls to customize yours now. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, so obviously we couldn't veneer it up with that metal hanging off. So this gets a little bit sketchy here. We got a bottom bearing bit that is just hogging off some brass, especially on those corners. I got a lot hanging over. I've got the bit buried in the metal. It's gonna smoke a little bit. It was a lot of shavings fun. I hate doing this in my shop because it just sent brass shavings everywhere. But honestly, I didn't, I didn't really know a better way to do this because I didn't want to pre-cut them to the curve. It's just afraid that it would be hard to get everything lined up. So with this, at least I have some wiggle room and I can just come back and flush trim the brass and deal with the shavings and all that stuff flying all over the place. It's, it's also messy because I've got wet epoxy in there as well. So we've already got one in the bag here. We're going to pop it loose. Put this second one in. I make sure I put some paper down. It's just epoxy in a veneer bag. I don't, it's not the best combination. So I, I make sure paper's all over it. And we're gonna keep anything from leaking out and getting on my bag or on the veneer table. 
So once we pop them out, we start through the process of sanding them with the orbital, get them nice and polished. I don't show my entire process, but I just start with like a 120 grit and just work through the grits up to a high grit, like 320, go 400 by hand. Then I've got a polisher and I can polish it. I've got these pretty shiny. And then I did finish them with a clear coat because I don't want them to tarnish. I want to keep that polished. So they're all nice and polished and finished up. So they're safe and protected. So with those done, I've got the two mating panels that, that go into the, that capture the brass and make one big panel. I've got to cut a slot down the middle of this. So I'm marking it out right now. I've got my, uh, I've got my marking gauge set to the thickness of the brass I laid up. And now I'm centering it on this panel. This panel's an inch and a half. It's two pieces of three quarter uh, stuck together. And then I'm gonna run this kind of just, you know, like a foot long cut. And that way I can take my router, drop my tooling right down to that knife line made by the marking gauge and dial in where I need this groove to be because it needs to be perfectly centered. I did put a banding on the outside of this plywood that bent around it. And I had a little issues with it, with it not getting glued down as well as it should have, kind of popping off. So I did a lot of climb cutting here to try to save from chip, pieces chipping off. And I did have a little bit I had to fix, but for the most part, it came out looking pretty good. So you see here, this, this is the piece dropping in. This is not fully polished. This is kind of going through the process of getting it where I want it. Fits in there nicely. And again, the CNC and the CAD program really make this a breeze because I can, I can draw this up really easy in Fusion 360 and export everything. Like the, the panel, the wood panel there was all cut on the CNC. Everything is just, it's gonna fit just right because you just got it all dialed in. If I didn't have the CNC, I could do it as well, but I would probably have to use a little bit different approach hand draw some stuff, make some jigs, and it would take a lot longer. So this is the mating part. Uh, we're gonna cut a groove in it now, and then it's gonna capture that brass piece that we already put in the other side. So here you can see it slides together everything fits good I, if you might notice the grain change it's a cool little detail so the big piece is going vertical and then the added piece on the side is going horizontal just kind of creates this contrast and you got the brass separating the two so i think it adds uh, an interesting aspect to this desk the big s4s fired up i've been using this machine a lot lately now that i'm back to one man shop this is a time saver uh, basically i'm just milling a piece of walnut down about an inch inch and three-eighths thick it's going to be banding for our veneer top so you can see here the oak base so you can see here the walnut top it's 120 inches long and it wraps waterfalls down to the floor so we need to we've already got a plywood substrate laid up we need to band that here with this walnut we're working on so I'm at the table saw resawing out from that piece we just ran through the S4S the reason I want to do it this way is if I resaw multiple pieces I get this continuous flow of grain so when you look at the edge of the table I've selected rift saw in here so it's straight grain it just flows around that edge real nice it doesn't doesn't draw your eye it doesn't stand out in any way it just looks nice and so if you just use random pieces of walnut this the joints you I don't have long enough pieces right so you got joint in the middle of the table you got joint at the miter and if there were different grain orientations and just different grit colors and stuff it just it would pop and it, it wouldn't look good just glue these on I'll nail them on with a little pin nailer with glue and I can fill those holes later and they disappear you know a lot of people will tape them tape's great I think uh nailing them and then coming back with clamps and really clamping them in tight is is my way to go Oftentimes, if you just tape, you don't get quite as good a joint there. All right, so moving on to veneering the top. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because we've done a lot of veneering on my channel lately. I've, most of the veneering I've done, too, has been shop-made veneer. So it's a little different in that I bought this veneer from Certainly Woods. It's uh, 
really the only place I could find anywhere that had long enough veneer. And even this veneer wasn't long enough to travel up the 30 inches, over the 120 on the top, and back down 30. So that's 180 inches. I had to put little uh, cross pieces at the bottom, which you'll see further in the video, to make up for the shortness of the veneers. What I'm doing here is I'm actually going to use the substrate that we just banded as my straight edge to joint these veneers. So I'm using my hand plane to straighten that out and then checking it here with my straight edge. I've got blocks under the substrate so it raises it off the table a little bit and that allows me to get my hand plane on there and hand plane it. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut one. So we just use the, I just use the router with a bottom bearing bit and it runs on that straight edge and it cuts a nice straight joint on my veneer and then I can flip it over and, and I can do two of these and put them together and make sure I'm happy with how that joint comes together because you really can't force a veneer joint together. I mean, you're using tape to joint this up. So when you put those two pieces together, especially at 120 inches long, you gotta be that sure that better. there's no that's bow in it or opposite a cup. Uh, you just want a nice, clean, straight line the whole way. And that's probably the hardest part of veneer is, is getting those joints nice and clean so that you know when you, when you take it out of the bag, you don't see any uh, gaps in those joints where basically adhesive has just filled them. This is my check here, just blue tape, pull it together, uh, making sure that everything looks good. There you okay, so with it good, I'm going to jump in and start right, cutting. I got Judd, he loves to come up yep. and help out. Also, the dog chasing its tail, member Chester. He's crazy. He's still crazy. It's funny, he's actually going to get older in this video as we go because this is a Took two months to go do the shop with this, but you'll see him be a much bigger dog towards the end of the bigger video. Judd's an awesome helper. He's just sitting here holding the cord. He's very observant. He loves to see what you're doing, and he learns really quickly. Uh, oftentimes, I find him figuring out how to help me without me even asking. So he's he likes being up there, and uh, he's he enjoys it. He's he's very in tune to what I'm doing. Okay, so magically all of that veneer is, is uh, laid up, taped together, and I'm gluing up here. Now, I don't show the full glue up here. I do, uh, not to just sell you guys on everything, I have been contributing a lot to Patreon. I've been doing shop updates every probably two weeks, and I have probably three or four on this build, and there's a whole 45 minute video of this entire glue of just uncut footage. It was pretty chaotic. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of bonus stuff in there. Uh, so if you want to help support the channel and see more of how things happen, go over to the Patreon and check that out. I would greatly appreciate that. That helps kind of support what I do. This is part of veneering. A lot of times you glue things, your substrate, or you glue it to your veneer table. I try to avoid that. I should have put my paper in between this and the, the, uh, the, the gosh darn it, the cover sheet. But I forgot. It was The glue was super hectic, by the way. So... Uh, imagine 120 inch long by 48 wide top, putting veneer on one side, then having to by myself pick it up, flip it over, and put more veneer on. So I ended up gluing that to it. Luckily, generally, the plywood just pulls apart, and then I glued it to the table as well. So I tore up my table a little bit. Uh, that's part of it. The, I hate this part. I really do. This is my least favorite part about using blue tape. I need to go back to the, uh, I forget what you call it, it's like gum tape. So you get it wet and it pulls it together and it sands off. It's like paper. Blue tape's a nightmare to remove. Scraping it, I'll basically, so basically I'll scrape it off and then I'm going to sand it here through a 120 grit. Kind of get all that epoxy off on the seams and make it look nice and neat. Okay, so it's time to do the two side sections. Here you see them, They're, they go up and then miter to the top. And it's that same waterfall idea where the grain flows down. First things first, it's very hard to keep track of things. So you gotta be really good about keeping track of what goes with what, so you can keep your, your grain flow. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did on the long pieces, just joint this, and then we're gonna put a piece going cross grain against it. Almost kinda looks like a breadboard end. Kind of a cool little detail, just makes up for the fact that we're a little short on the length. 
So you can see it there. Another thing we're going to do too is we're going to wrap this piece around. So you'll see a wrap around the front edge of that and then back around the back side. So there's some tricky things going on here. All right, so cutting the miters. This is, I had some issues with my Festool saw. It is old. I've had this saw for probably 13, 14 years, and I just, I think it's ready to retire. It, I had a hard time getting it dialed in to cut the miters how I wanted it. Eventually got there. It, there's no really better way to cut these miters than with a track saw, because you got an inch and a half thick material. I don't know why I don't have my table clamp down there, but that was kind of, that annoyed me watching it move. Yeah, you got an inch and a half table and you, that's, a big, that's a big miter to cut. So I don't have a big sliding table saw, panel saw that would make quick work of it. So this is the way to go. You'll notice here I've got it flipped, right? I've already cut the miter. I made a big mistake here. And I do talk a lot about this mistake in my update on the Patreon. I had to come back and recut this miter because I cut it upside down. So the grain flow was, that was wrong. So I had to flip it, do it on the other side, lose a little bit of my grain flow because I lost you know, quite a bit of material there and it shortened the whole desk. So I had to find a way to raise the desk back up and make it look okay. So that mistake on my part. I have to share those mistakes as well. So yeah, I don't, off the saw, I don't, I don't glue up. I, I can take my number eight here and plane this and even like you'll notice when you start planing it, there's a little bitty, deviations in the wood and the plane will smooth all that out just got to check and make sure that you're staying at 45 otherwise you can cause create more problems by getting your angle off because it's really important that you're at 45 degrees here and that you're at 90 otherwise your table is going to get kind of twisted or it's not going to close that gap up well so this is this is an important joint take some work so to strengthen this joint we're going to add dominoes Best way to lay out dominoes is with dividers. Just set them to divide it out. That's what dividers do. You start on the edge, work your way all the way around, get a pencil now, and I'm gonna mark a pencil line, and then every piece I do, I can do it the same. That means all my dominoes are in the same spot across the board. Really quick and easy way to lay out. Might seem like I'm putting a lot in here, but I feel like the, the more the better. Make this joint nice and strong. It's, you know, miners aren't the strongest joints by themselves, so reinforcing them is always a good idea. So, another quick test fit here to see how this drops on. Just making sure all those dominoes line up, nothing is off. A little bit tricky getting that on there. So I talked earlier about doing that veneer wrap around the bottom. That's what we're working on here. So basically I'm just shaving off material, the thickness of the veneer here using just a straight edge and a uh, flush trimming bit. It's just, you know, we're talking about an eighth of an inch here. Not even that, maybe, no, sixteenth of an inch. This is, you know, a little bit thinner veneer. So shave that down and then come back here and I, I've got a bevel because those two veneers on each side didn't quite line up at 90 so I just a little bit off 90 so I'd use my bevel to strike that knife wall and then with the knife wall there I can just chisel it uh, the waist out and have a nice clean square point there for my veneer to drop into One of the challenges with this is just keeping track of all the pieces and making sure I don't you know, misplace one or, put, or cut one wrong. So I don't know how, but somehow I managed to get through all this without screwing that up. But you can kind of get an idea, cool, idea there of how that looks. Great. It's really going to stand out once we get it glued on and I'll sand it away. I'll tape this on and then I'll tape on clamping calls because we, we want to get some hard pressure across the whole top of that veneer and really press it down onto the onto the leg there such a thin material without a call there you wouldn't get a good even spread clamp uh, clamping pressure 
Okay, while that's in the clamps, I've got this big long jig I've made to cut a pretty stout dado in the bottom of the tabletop. This is going to hold those two side pieces with the brass inlay. So capture those into the tabletop and just strengthen everything so it'll get glued in place. This also helps those two pieces serve as a way to help keep those legs at 90 and secured to the tabletop. Strengthens that miter a little bit, helps reinforce it. To transfer it, I put the side on and then I just mark it here with a knife to mark those walls. And then I'll put a little pencil there because sometimes it's really hard to see your knife marks. And from there, I can take it back off and lay my jig on it and cut the dado in the side. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. I mean, I've took it on and off a lot, but I'm doing a lot of test fitting here just to make sure I've got everything the way I want it. And this will give you an idea of how it's going to come together. That'll drop into that dado and slide into the side and get glued in place. And then we'll capture our center cabinets inside of those. So you can kind of see this, the other side's going on here. And the, it's hard, I didn't show the video, it might not be hard to see, it might be hard to see, but there's a rabbit on the ends of those pan, on the end of those panels that the, this drawer base cabinet slides into and connects to. And that gets screwed in place. So I'm just test fitting everything. It's you know it's tricky here that every everything lines up because you everything's got to be spaced properly for it to come together the way you want it. And that's the whole point of this. And you might notice too, everything's pre-finished. So the cabinets finished, the panels are finished, uh, everything. And now you can tell that the bottom of that tabletop is finished. So I, I finish as I go because this is too big of a piece to try to finish all assembled. It'd be really hard to get a good coat on everything and not get overspray. So for me, it's just way easier to just spray things as I go. It also makes it easier to clean off glue. Here I'm gluing this up. I'm using, again, epoxy, mostly for the open time. Uh, just gives me plenty of time to work with it and get everything secured. I've got to build some calls here, and I'm gonna start putting these on right now. And that's how I'm gonna clamp this 90 together. I did this trick on my one of my previous builds, the credenzas I built out of Texas Pecan, and it, it actually worked really well. I had a lot thinner material than this time it didn't work quite as well. I had a little bit of an issue. Uh, you know, those calls want to slide and basically I clamp them to the side of the tabletop and then start clamping them together. But they slide and sometimes you can't really see if you've closed the miter uh, and you're just kind of hoping for the best. And there was a few spots that I was a little unhappy with. So I had to do some work to make those look nice. Notice right here, I've got a little wedge block. I'm about to tap this in. This is what, I can't secure this bottom of this thing. There's no way to get a clamp on that. So I just screw that block down and tap the wedge in and that puts the pressure back towards it, that side and uh, gets a good press of glue, good glue joint there. Checking it for 90. It's really important that that should be perfectly 90 because I cut that panel to 90. All right, lights are off. I've got a laser level set up here and I'm just measuring. So I, I built the whole thing upside down because I have this really flat work surface here in my veneer table. So I can use that to check to make sure that my bottom is all of even height and it's not gonna rock. So I'm just checking every kind of corner of this uh, table bottom and seeing where if I have any uh, high spots or low spots. And I did in that back corner. So I just take a hand plane and work that down until it's all the measurements are the same on that laser line. And theoretically, when I flip it, it should sit really nice and flat. Now, of course, floors are never flat. And again, this thing is so big and heavy that just the sheer weight of it's probably gonna let it kind of sink and find its home. But I wanna try to get it as trued up and as nice as I can, just so I know I did it. Okay. 
You can kind of see the laser line going vertical there, but there's also a horizontal line that I'm referencing off here to make sure I'm doing this right. All right, so now we've got to work on the front part of this uh, reception. It's kind of just a cool feature. It gives a little texture to it. It's this diamond pattern, a uh, bunch of 45. So right now I'm just take, basically taking a square, like two by two, and ripping it out of 45, corner to corner. And this is the rendering here. It kind of looks funny with the material on there, but if you look at it in this light, you can see each individual piece and how that has a diamond shape where you've cut those off. So I think it adds kind of a cool look to the front breaks things up a little bit. So I had to make a whole bunch of these, so basically just ripped a bunch out. I was only, I only got one out of each cut. Um, fortunately, I didn't really, could have probably planned that better and been more useful with my material, but it didn't work out for me. So here I'm gonna lay them all out, just get them where I want them. I did cut, so the front ones have a cool like 45 slice that gives a diamond shape. I did that on the big Oliver bandsaw. You can kind of see the jig I set up here is a little bit sketchy but I lost the good footage. You see my camera there. I don't, I could not find that footage and it drives me crazy. I did talk about this jig over on one of my updates in the Patreon page. So if it interests you, you can learn more about it there. It was, it was a pretty cool way to do things, but also kind of a little bit sketchy with that old Oliver band saw and the lack of safety that that saw has. So I wanted to show this part of the video because it shows with kind of the digital workflow sometimes I use. Um, I've got Fusion 360 open. I've got to make a cutout for this front cabinet so it can slide into the tabletop because it's higher. So it doesn't go under the tabletop. It just basically slides into it. So we've got to make a fairly large cutout. So I'm measuring the cabinet and going into CAD here and drawing out a template that we can route out this cutout to fit this cabinet perfectly. So I designed that up in Fusion, put it on the CNC. The, the accuracy is just perfect. I don't have to worry about anything. And I can really do this process quick. I mean, it's much slower without this. So the digital workflow is just, so the digital workflow is just really efficient in coming up with jigs like this. So once I got it cut out, lay it up there, I'm gonna put a little fence on the front, keep those legs nice and straight and not spread out. Also gives me a point to clamp to. I can clamp across the whole tabletop and hold it in place. And once we get that uh, front fence on there, we can set up the router with basically a half inch bit. It'll cut a half inch deep with a uh, half inch diameter and it has a top bearing. So I'm just gonna basically run a little path all around this jig and that's the cutout I want. So once I run that path, I can pull the jig off. It's literally all that work to make a jig for a cut that takes you know, one minute. Pull that jig off and then we'll get the jigsaw and very, very carefully cut in the path with the router, with the router bit that I just cut and cut out that waste. And you get an idea there. Now, the whole opening steps in a quarter inch all around because we're gonna cut a quarter inch deep dado into the cabinet so it all slides in there and there's, there's a joint to it, right? So the top, if you set on the top right there, it's supported by the dado in the cabinet and it just strengthens everything up. You wouldn't want to just slide it in there and try to like screw it in place from the inside. You really want to capture it in a dado. It's kind of nerve wracking cutting into this top. It's expensive at this point. There's a lot of material in it, a whole lot of labor. So this is one of those ones where you really just take your time and make sure you got, make sure you got everything lined up and figured out. Once it's all cut out, we're gonna go back to the router, put a top bearing bit on, pretty heavy duty one that's gonna take everything in one cut. So I'm just gonna follow that original uh, track I made with my first cut on the jig and it's going to make an exact copy of that and take all the waste off and have a finished cutout ready for the cabinet to slide into. So you can see there, I didn't show how I cut these dados. It's very similar to how I did the dados on the underside of the table with a jig. I just made a jig that was the thickness of the tabletop and then you can see there it slides in real nice and it's a good solid connection, nice and strong.
So moving forward, we've got finish on everything. All the diamond pieces or the mitered pieces are all pre-finished like we did earlier. The cabinet's finished. Now I'm going to slide all these pieces on. Judd's going to help me out and just screw them all on from the backside. 10, 14, here we go. Perfect. Screw. So once all those are attached, I, uh, again, we're going with epoxy because that's just the theme, total boat epoxy. Got the open time, got plenty of time to, to get everything uh, together. This fit really well before I put everything together for some reason. It, it just got a little bit more difficult and I didn't anticipate this happening, but I was really, really having to hit on it pretty hard. I almost stopped here and, and you know, was going to take another course of action, but I already had glue on everything. And, it, you know, once you, if you stop, you got to clean everything off. And it's just, a, it's, just, I don't know, it's annoying. So I just kind of crossed my fingers and, and took it slow and hit each side and walked it in there. And it, it, it finally got, found its home and got going, but it was a little tighter than I was hoping. Here's a higher up shot. One thing I can say I'm not overly proud of, I got a little lazy uh, screwing my screws to the those front trim pieces, the angle pieces. I just kind of randomly put them in there. I didn't draw a line or keep them nice and clean. Every time I look in that box, I'm like, Andy, why didn't you take the time to at least make your screws look nice? But no one's gonna see in it. So I guess it's not something to overly worry about. Also, you notice here, this is seating up great, by the way. The tabletop is all finished, so I've taken the time to spray three coats of conversion varnish on the tabletop. So, you know, we're getting a lot of the finishing work done as we build. Total shift here, we're going to drawers. I didn't show how I built drawers. Uh, if you want to look into that in more detail, I do. I did that in the, in the credenza build I talked about earlier. I'm installing locks on these, so since this is going in a commercial building, uh, they requested that there be locks on the drawers. These are, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, like a barrel style lock with a deadbolt that goes vertical straight up. So I, I'm screwing this to the drawer front and then that little pocket I drilled earlier with the Forstner bit, that's just kind of is a hole to, to, for the back of that lock hardware to fall into. It looks real clean from the top and uh, it's, you know, it's, I, I like the way these look. They kind of stick out a little bit past the drawer front the one thing about these is they take a little time to not install. Not necessarily, well, getting to this point took a while, but now you've got to cut mortises for all of the locks to go into. So I get a, get some paint. This is some old paint I've left over from the Argosy, some test paint. And I'm just painting the top of each one of those strikes. And when the paint's wet, close the drawer, you turn it up, it hits the the piece above the drawer and just leaves a nice mark there so you know exactly where to cut your mortise. There's really no way to pre-cut these mortises. I mean, you just, you gotta line these up just right. You kinda have to do them individually to each one. So I went through and marked all of them. I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. I'm gonna bust out my uh, mortise lock chisels. I'm probably not calling those the right name. Uh, they're Lee Nielsen chisels. I literally used these once before on the cherry dresser I built years ago on this channel. And it's one of my favorite pieces, by the way. Uh, I had to do the exact same process, but they were half mortise locks. Much nicer, much fancier locks. These are not quite to that level. 
but you can see how these work, man. You just, they're, they're designed to fit in tight spaces. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to push everyone to join my Patreon, but a pretty in-depth video on how I use these and, and how these work over on the Patreon if you want to see that. I've managed to get the cabinet off of the veneer table. You can't really see in this pit, well there you see it. I built custom dollies for it. So uh, there's, you know, I spent uh, two or three hours making these really nice dollies so that I could move it around the shop easily. I could transport it easily. Uh, it turns out I didn't have to deliver, which was nice. But I was, at this point, I thought I was gonna have to deliver. So I thought with the dollies, I could just roll it in my trailer and roll it out. I had a really hard time getting this cabinet in here though I, and fussed with it for a while. That's why I was hand planing it earlier. I was trying to take a little bit off so it would slide in, but it's just catching on those dollies I made. I finally, after uh, probably a few not good words, got it in place. It was a little frustrating and got it screwed down to the tabletop and secured. Just, sometimes it just takes some brute force and ignorance. Okay, we're gonna drop all the drawers in. These drawer fronts look a little different because they're not finished yet. Those are just raw wood, so that's why it's standing out. Those look pretty nice. Now we've got to get some pulls put on them. And then you can see here, well, for one, you can see how cool that veneer bottom piece i think it looks great the way that came out and then you know i can manage to kind of pull this thing around and move it around the shop and that's you know pretty much 98 percent of the way done right there okay so that shuts it down for this video so i don't want to disappoint but i am kind of going to disappoint a little bit uh i don't this this thing shipped off to austin left my shop to go to storage because i had it done before they were ready to install it they're a little behind on construction somehow i'm ahead of the game i don't know how that happened uh, so i'm going to be going back down to austin here in about three or four weeks to set it all up and get it all done i'll get photos of it get it all video and i'll get video of it in its finished spot i will likely i don't think i'm gonna make a video of that who knows i might but i definitely will share it on the community thing i'll share it over on my instagram um, but for those of y'all who don't have instagram you will be able to see it somehow on youtube i'll make sure of that Thank you for coming along for the ride. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I uh, appreciate everyone who tunes into these videos and sits back and watches me turn, you know, 200 hours of shop time into a 45 minute video. It's pretty wild. Don't forget, if you want, you can support me on Patreon or you can buy merch, however you want to do that. Uh, I would appreciate it. No pressure on that. Leave a comment. That's enough for me. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.